hello everyone and welcome back we are here with another interesting tutorial on heat this is the first tutorial on heat and i got a lot of requests regarding phase change so i thought why not make a nice tutorial using water so as you can see in this animation ice is being converted into water so this is the hypothetical uh, shape of a rectangle where heat is provided on the right hand side and you can see that ice is being converted into water and we have animated with time. So let us first go through the equation and theory and then we'll move on to the software and learn how to model phase change in the software. So to derive the phase change equation, we begin with the basic heat conduction equation, also known as Fourier's law. So you might know that Q is equal to minus k times delta t so q is the heat flux k is the thermal conductivity and delta t is the temperature gradient now let's say for a volume element the rate of change of internal energy due to heat conduction is given by rho cp del t by del t where capital T is temperature and small t is time is equal to del k del t okay here rho is the density cp is the specific heat t is the temperature and small t is the time during a phase change the material absorbs or releases latent heat without a change in temperature. This is modeled by adding a term representing the rate of energy change due to phase transformation. And it is represented as rho L del phi by del t, where L is the latent heat of phase change and phi represents the phase fraction. Now, if we write the complete phase change equation, it looks something like this. So, we have rho Cp del T by dt is equal to del dot K del T plus Q, that is the heat, minus rho L del phi by del T. Here, Q is the internal heat generation per unit volume. This equation accounts for the heat conduction, internal heat generation and the energy involved in the phase change. So you can say that this is the complete equation for phase change. So for example, let's say an ice cube is converted into a glass of water, then basically uh, we apply this equation to get the time taken and the different heat exchanges occurring between the two phase change. So before we jump to the software and start modeling the water ice system, let us first understand the phase diagram of water. It is quite interesting and let us see what we can understand from this. So we have pressure on the one side and temperature on the other. Now this is called the triple point of water. This is the most interesting point that is around 0 degree Celsius, right? Now, as we increase the temperature, you can see that the water tends to form the water vapor. And as you try to cool, it either forms water and as you cool further, it goes towards the ice region. And at a pressure below a certain limit there is no ice even if you lower the temperature it only forms the water vapor so this is quite a good uh, diagram to understand the different phase of water in terms of pressure and temperature now let us see a different graph where we plot the temperature and here you can say time so what is happening here let's say we have a glass of water basically you can think of 
it as ice initially and we are providing some heat and we are actually trying to measure the temperature with respect to time so what is happening here at first the ice is at minus 20 degrees celsius then as we are heating it up the temperature will rise and at 0 degrees celsius ice will form water there will be a phase change since there is a phase change you can see that the temperature will not rise all the heat will be absorbed and it will be used in the latent heat of fusion that will actually convert ice to water and then the temperature of water will rise with temperature again at 100 degrees celsius at uh, room temperature and pressure it will again from water to water vapor so this is again a latent heat is being used to convert it into vapor so this is how it works that is why the graph actually looks something like this so this flat region are actually due to the latent heat so now what we will be doing is that we will first take a rectangular block of ice okay so this is ice and what we will do we will provide heat on one side that will basically melt the ice and we will define the density the specific heat the latent heat and time and of course the dimension of the ice and we will try to figure it out uh, with time how it is melting what is the temperature profile heat profile and so on okay so this is the main objective of our work and in the meantime we will also set this as an insulator on the other three side so that we do not consider the radiation and the other phenomena that are involved in realistic scenarios so this is how the modeling workflow will begin so let us jump into console multiphysics and see how we can solve this problem and of course if you are interested uh, to get a python version of this modeling this can also be done uh, do comment in the description if you are interested then i will create a fully python tutorial of a two-dimensional uh, phase change of liquid uh, totally in python so let's jump into console multiphysics and see how we can do this uh, modeling workflow so we are in the console multiphysics uh, window what we will do first is we'll create a blank document and then we'll create a 2d component because we're interested to study a rectangular shaped ice so we'll go on and click on blank model and we'll just click on add component and then click on 2d component it might take few seconds and uh, we'll have the window so what we will do we'll first draw a rectangle and then we'll add different settings so we'll go on to geometry and then we'll click on rectangle in the width i will just write 0 0.01 and height 0 0.001 and i'll click on build selected so you can see that we have the block uh, ready now we'll go on to the parameter and just add different values that will be needed in our workflow at first we'll add the transition temperature so we'll write t trans and this is zero okay so you are writing in uh, celsius so what we can do we can just write as degc okay that means that this is in degree celsius and the value will be converted into kelvin and now we will add the lower temperature so t zero and 
this is minus 10 degree okay and let us set the temperature of the hottest side basically the region where we are actually providing the heat so let this be 85 degree celsius so all this temperature are done all together now let us write the density of ice and water that will be need needed so density of ice is 918 and of course we should write the unit so this is kg per meter cube i'll just copy this and density of water is 997 Or let us take 1000 for simplicity. Of course, you can change the value in your modeling workflow. That doesn't matter. And then we'll also write the ratio of water. So that is the ratio of the ice and water. So I'll just copy and I'll divide and click on paste. Okay. So this is the ratio of densities so we are done with the basic parameter now what we will do we will add the material and then uh, we can add the module in the physics add the mesh and then model okay so we'll add a blank material so this will be ice and we'll again add a blank material this time this will be water okay don't worry we'll fill in the details later but uh, for now i'll just select this and what we will do now is that we'll add the physics interface so we'll go on to physics click on add physics in the add physics we'll we are interested to study the heat so we'll go to heat transfer and heat transfer in fluids because we will be studying water so i'll click on add to component one it might take few seconds but that component uh, will be added here just before the mesh so you can wait few seconds so the heat transfer in fluid is added so i can close the physics because i don't need it now and as you can see the physics has already selected the block now i'll go back to water and you can see that it is asking for these three properties that is the thermal conductivity the density and the heat capacity so let us write the values one by one so what is the thermal conductivity the thermal conductivity is 0 0.613 that i got uh, somewhere from the tutorial what by m into k times the ratio uh, i'll just copy this so i'll copy and i'll just paste it what is the error i'm getting unknown variable ratio oh i think this is fine now probably yeah so heat capacity at constant pressure what is the value of cp of water so the heat capacity of water is 4179 in si unit okay and density so the density of water is the density of water times the ratio why am i not writing only density of water because remember that there will be a phase change and the density of water will not be 
fixed. If we consider the total volume, the total density will not remain fixed. It will change with time because the percentage of water will increase and the percentage of ice will decrease and so on. So we are done with the water and now we are interested to uh, write the properties of ice as well. So I'll just disable the water for now. Now I'll just move this. So as you can see for ice also we need the thermal conductivity, density as well as the heat capacity. So the heat capacity of ice is 2052. Um, sorry, 2052. The density is density ice and the thermal conductivity. So the thermal conductivity is around 2.3. So here we are writing the density of ice because initially the density of ice is the density of the whole block. Okay, so we are actually done. Now what we have to do is we need to set up the physics. So click on the heat transfer for fluid. In the fluid one section, right click and click on phase change material. When you click on phase change material, a lot of different settings will pop up and we need to actually uh, fill in the values. So the phase change between phase 1 and phase 2, uh, the temperature is at 0 degrees Celsius. So this is fine because the phase change between ice and water is at 0 degrees Celsius. So we don't have to change this. Now the transition interval between phase 1 and phase 2, what is the value of delta T? So for simplicity, let us take this as 1, 1 Kelvin, okay? And the latent heat from phase 1 to 2, that means the latent heat of fusion. So we need to write the latent heat of fusion. So I think it is 333. It's probably 333, if I'm not wrong. So I, I won't change this. Now, in the phase 1, we have to select as ice. Remember that the phase change is from ice to water and not the other way around and the second is water and the rest of the parameter values we it will automatically take from the material component so you can see that the density and other details are uh, here already that will automatically be taken from the material so we have almost set up the phase change now let us click on the initial value. So what is the initial uh, value of the temperature? Is it 0 degree Celsius? No, we have already set up the initial uh, value. So that is T underscore 0. Remember that this was our initial temperature. That is the value of temperature of ice. Now we need to add the thermal insulator. By default, you will see that the insulator will be added, so we don't have to worry about that. And we have to add the temperature. So I'll click on temperature. So here's the interesting part. We will create a step function and the temperature profile will be in the form of the step. So what we'll do, we'll go on to global definition. In the function, we'll click on step and here we will write T input and here we will write T underscore 0 to I'll just copy this because uh, I generally don't remember the value names. So let us see how the plot actually looks. It looks something like this so I think this is fine but we can of course uh, set the location so we can set it to 0 0.04 yeah this is fine so we have set up the temperature uh, ramp okay 
so here what we can do we can call the function t input and we can actually set up the temperature so we'll just paste and within brackets we can write t that is the time in by default in Comsol multiphysics and to stay consistent with the unit we will write 1 by s okay so this is the format you generally use to write the time dependence and also to keep consistency with the unit so we are almost done now let us create the mesh to create the mesh what we need to do we just click on first build all and see if it is uh, working uh, fine uh, but I am not actually happy with the default mesh so I'll just go on to mesh click on distribution but yeah I'll just click on user control and I'll just click on distribution I'll select these two sides maybe I will add 50 elements and I will just duplicate this distribution click this and uh, maybe I'll just add 16 elements here then free triangular I'll keep the remaining and maybe I can add a distribution here let's see yeah so the mesh is almost done so I tried to add a final mesh here because there will be a temperature gradient towards the end so we are almost done now the next part is to set up the study so we'll go on to study click on add study and we are interested in a time dependent study so we'll just right click click on add study again it might take few seconds if uh, your system is a bit slow don't worry so in the time there will be nothing in one second so if you think physically let's say you have an ice cube how long does it take to melt um, it generally melts in 30 seconds to maybe um, one hour or few minutes so we'll first set the range from 0 to 20 or 0 to 10 to 50 and then we'll set a range from 60 to 20 to um, 120 and then another range from 120 to 60 to 1100 okay and I'll just change this to 100 to keep it consistent so I think the values are not overlapping uh, I hope this is fine so maybe I can change this to 1300 or a multiple of uh, 60 so 1200 is fine I guess let's see and in tolerance we'll just set it to 0 0.01 and we'll click on compute so let's wait for the result so the simulation is done and you can see that the temperature gradient is shown here now I'll go on to 10 seconds I'll first go on to 0 and click on plot so you can see initially it is all ice so 263 Kelvin is basically minus 10 degrees Celsius so I'll go on to surface and instead of Kelvin I can just select degree C 
click on plot now you can see that the plot is in celsius so it is minus 10. now if i go on to higher temperature let's say 10 seconds you can see that the temperature is actually rising so this end is around 85 degrees celsius as we have set it to 85 right and the colder region is around uh, minus 10 and after each time you see that the temperature is actually increasing and basically the ice is melting so if i click on 420 you can see that all the ice has melted why because the temperature gradient you can see is close to 30 that means it has already melted into water so if i click on 360 it has melted 300 so probably after 300 second uh, all the ice has melted oh it is something like that okay so now uh, what we can do we can actually add another study and then simulate it to get the result without the latent heat and then we'll compare the results so i'll go on to add study we'll again add a time dependent study to save time i will just copy the range paste it here and i will just add the sweep add the latent heat so i haven't set the latent heat here what i can do is i'll go on to the physics and here what i can do i can just cut latent ice okay and here i will create and i'll paste the value okay now i think this is fine yeah so i'll go back here i will choose the latent ice and set it to zero so basically i am not considering any latent heat of fusion in this case in study two so here i'll just write no l okay and now i will click on compute and see the results so i'll just wait for the results probably this will take less time because it will uh, now uh, not have the latent heat calculation so this is the temperature profile now in the two dimensional plot you won't see much of a difference the difference will be prominent when we will plot the one dimensional graph so i'll go on to result click on 1d plot group and then we'll click on line graph now i'll click on define cut line and we will just set two points just to check the result and the temperature will select degree celsius and click on plot so we can select solution one define the cut line once again so you can select this and click on plot so this is with latent heat so let me just plot this uh, once again i'll just duplicate this and this time i'll select the second solution and again i will choose the points and click on plot so let us first see the graph with latent heat and try to understand what is going on now you can see that at lower time that is at zero second all of them is at minus 10 degrees celsius now at some higher time some of the ice has melted and at zero degrees celsius you can see it is 
getting flatter because of latent heat of fusion so it is suddenly changing the curve is having a sharp pointy edge here you can see why because the water and ice interface the temperature is actually zero degrees celsius because ice is melting it into water without actually increasing the temperature now if you look at this graph without the latent heat you can see that the curve is actually smooth why because here in this case the latent heat of fusion is not there it is zero that means it has nothing to resist the change in temperature so the ice will easily get converted into water so at higher temperature it will gradually convert it into lower temperature without any sharp change at zero degrees celsius uh, don't worry about these discrepancies uh, it generally arises if the mesh is not finer and so on but if we just look at these two graphs you can see that clearly there is a visual difference between the graph using latent heat and the graph without using the latent heat so this is the main inference of this work and of course you can do various other studies other plots two dimensional plot time dependent plot and so on so my goal was to show you how you can actually model the phase change now depending on the type of study you are doing of course you have to use different equation different model as well as different equation it may not be as simple as water and ice of course it has uh, let's say if it has some other liquid mixed with water then the process will be slightly different and if it has some temperature dependence property then of course you have to implement it and so on so i hope you learned something from this video if you like this video please do subscribe to this channel it really helps and if you are interested in uh, structured videos and lessons and if you are a beginner then do check out my courses it will really help you thank you for watching and have a nice day ahead